Mason Brill. And we are the founders of Sweat Guru. Our journey to Sweat Guru began in 2009. Elise and I were running a successful fitness business in San Francisco. Oh, excuse me. Hannah, you owe me 20 bucks and a lap. Take a lap. Let's get back to business. So our real pain points were actually in the business of managing our business. We were using Excel spreadsheets and text messages to operate our entire fitness business online. Or, sorry, our entire business. business. And um, as you can imagine, trying to track who paid, when they paid, how they paid, who came to class, who canceled on class, that way was a total headache, a nightmare, a disaster for me. And the more we talked to people in our community about the problems they were having running their fitness businesses, the more we realized our back office problem was not just our problem. So we created a solution. And we built Sweat Guru. Sweat Guru is the first online marketplace that connects people around fitness classes and experiences. For fitness professionals, it's a complete back office solution, including CRM, payment processing, online schedules, marketing, and analytics. And for consumers, it's a super easy way to discover, book, and share fitness online. And it's one place to track and manage all of your fitness experiences. So we're going to take a minute to brag. Right now, we've raised 500K from Private Angels. We've won a few awards. Thanks, Tech Cocktail. Um, we have currently 80 private beta customers in our target markets, which are San Francisco, New York, and LA. Um, and we want to take a little pause here because we've learned a lot of lessons since we've been in this private beta. Um, and they're very interesting and, and taught us a lot about sort of where we're going next as we get from ready for our public beta launch next week. The first is marketing. Our customers are super eager for new ways to market their business. The second thing we learned, and really it was a confirmation, that our businesses are, our customers are really lacking the tools they need to run their back office. And lastly, we'll get into this in more detail later, is that we've been able to acquire these 80 customers very quickly, and we've realized the potential and the power of the online community that we've created, which we'll get into. Yes. But first, <laughs> let us tell you a little bit about who we are and why we're the right people to take on this problem. Jamie and I are great partners. We've been running businesses together since we were nine years old. Our first business was a potpourri stand in our neighborhood. Lemonade is for fools. Lemonade is a total me too company. So we've been innovating for a long time, since we were very small. But our innovation didn't stop at potpourri stands. Actually, what we didn't tell you was during this time we were running a successful fitness business in San Francisco, we, um, was, we were experiencing those pain points I talked about. We were growing and we were like, we gotta do something about this. We quickly launched a website, and shortly thereafter, a community of fitness professionals, athletes, and fitness influencers just like us flocked to become part of this community. We currently have over 3,000 and growing brand ambassadors around the world. This is a marketing army made up of our own customer base. And so what you can probably gather from that is this is a huge customer acquisition strategy for us. In fact, 80, the majority of those 80 private beta customers came from within our community. And we've just begun to open it up to them. And we can't wait to see how those numbers are going to drastically change as we unleash it to the rest of our community. Um, and beyond that, we realize we're going to scale beyond the community and leverage those amazing partnerships that we've already um, started to uh, secure with fitness brands like Athleta and Splits 59 and fitness associations like IdeaFit. As you can see, we are deeply ingrained in this industry. We're already speaking at the relevant conferences. We know all the influencers. We are influencers. And we are just uniquely poised to take this industry by storm. And we hope you guys are all along for the ride. So with that said, let's get sweaty, y'all. Thank you. Um, oh. I was just going to ask, can you give me like a case study? Tell me, tell me sort of who, who, who would use it? And yeah. what are they using it for? Because I don't know that I would want to share my fitness every day. You know? Yeah, great. Um, so we can start on the, the provider side, and then we'll talk about the consumer. Um, so on the provider side, one of our actually great case study, one of our beta customers in San Francisco, her name is Christy. Um, she runs a boot camp uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings. It's Pilates infused. And um, she was actually doing everything like we were, pen and paper. And when we came to her, she was like, oh my god, I need this. Um, so now she runs her entire business. She has no website on SweatGuru, which is great. So that's how one case study she's using it, how consumers can use it. Um, you can actually manage and track your fitness. You don't have to share anything. You just get to see what classes you've purchased. So 
if you're like me, and excuse this, but I'm a little bit of a yoga whore. I tend to go to studios all over San Francisco. Um, and the thing that I hate the most, and this happens to me all the time, is I'll have class passes that I purchase for 10 classes. And then I walk in and they're like, you had three classes left, but you let it expire. So in Sweat Guru, it would manage that for me. It would say, hey, that pass is about to expire. You should go and use it. And you don't have to share anything. Cool, thank you. So you mentioned three huge focus markets. The yeah. back office, uh, the marketing of the studios, the fitness clubs, and discovery from the customer side. Can you really do all that all at once as an early stage company with a couple hundred thousand dollars in investment? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to expand on that? <laughs> what, so uh, the easy question, what's, what's going to make you the most money in the next five years out of those three, and why not focus on that? Yeah, so actually we think it's a very great question, and um, we think there's a huge opportunity um, with the software alone. Um, the, software, the fitness software market currently is a $70 um, million dollar industry, and that's only less than 1% of the fitness businesses that are out there. That so are the back business. office, you mean? Back office. And that alone, we think that it'll soon become ancillary, and that consumer opportunity is going to be large as well. What, what, does, um, what does it look like from, on the consumer side, your traffic? Like, who, you have 80 uh, fit individual fitness instructors who are using the product. On the consumer side, what are you experiencing? It's currently a very controlled ecosystem because we are in private beta. So it's really just friendlies and people that we're allowing in and our 80 beta customers' clients. Uh, so right now, the consumer side is very controlled, but this Wednesday that will all change. <laughs> um, I'm curious about your pricing strategy for the back office stuff, just because I know from hanging out in the industry that um, it's a pretty low margin business in a lot of cases. That's why I assume it's only 1% that's using software right now. So how are you attacking that? Yeah, you're, yes, you're exactly right. Um, it's a very hard business to be in. We were doing it ourselves, so we know. Um, and you know, we looked at a, the pricing scale, and it's currently 19 to 76 dollars and that depends on the size and complexity of your business so it's 19 dollars for an individual instructor yeah. and that's per month oh sorry <laughs> yeah thank you are you handling payments um, as part of the CRM we are okay yeah it's complete back end with payment processing CRM uh, analytics and some marketing automation tools so all that exists right now or these are planned to exist what all actually? of that exists <laughs> yeah Anything else? Oh, yeah. So oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, do you know who your competition is out there? You say you're the one and only, but there must be other people playing in the space. There are. <laughs> sure. Uh, yes, um, there are quite a few players in the space. Uh, there's one sort of dominant player, and they're really, you know, they do pure back end, just the back office. And we've found through talking to our customers and our community that they really need the marketing side, too. So we're planning to really tackle the end to end and give them something that can help them grow beyond just manage. And what marketing techniques are you thinking are going to be most effective? Um, <laughs> what marketing techniques are going to be most effective? Um, yeah, so as we talked about a little bit, um, we get this question quite a lot. And one of the things you know we talked about is our community and the, the sheer power of it, um, not just in numbers, but in engagement. Um, and one thing that we did mention, um, and it's just one strategy of you know many, but um, with that, what we've seen, and even just with our private beta, where we've been letting in just small amounts of people trying to really get a very thoughtful product out, um, is that it wasn't just within our actual 3,000 ambassadors. It was our you know, ambassadors saying, like, hey, Jamie and Elise, you guys should also know this person, and they should be using. So we were even getting referrals from within the community, so it reaches very, very far and wide. Um, so that's a huge marketing strategy for us, obviously. Um, and you know, marketing and PR in our DNA, um, it's sort of what we live to do. And um, so we're really excited about you know, moving ahead on that, on that front as well. Does that answer your question? Sure. What do you think is gonna be the hardest thing that you guys have to accomplish to succeed? The one hardest challenge to solve? I, I like asking good questions. That's a great question. <laughs> I'm like, it's one hardest challenge. I think, well, one of the challenges that we faced is really finding the right people to help us build this. Uh, Jamie and I are lucky that we have each other. We're actually cousins, and so we've been doing things together our whole lives, and we work really well together. But building the rest of the team, we now have an amazing team in place, but 
getting to that point when you're still young and or your business is young and you still have to prove yourself was challenging at first, but we overcame that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I think the biggest challenge is really the, the chicken and egg problem. Um, and, you know, we're going to keep tackling it one chicken and one egg at a time. Is there anybody who's advising you that you really, I think, has contributed greatly to forming the business? Um, we don't have any formal advisors currently. Um, we'd love some if anyone wants to volunteer. Um, but we have a lot of advisors in our network. Um, you know, we're in San Francisco. We're in the hub of everything. And we both have very deep networks. Um, so we have a, a list of people that we've been leaning on um, for support and guidance through this process. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.